Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Cohen Simulations R22 Robinson Beta 2 helicopter. Now this is a really, really well simulated helicopter. There are a lot of helicopters and flight sim out there. This is probably the first one I think I've flown yet that actually feels like a helicopter. And I'll explain what I mean now once we get inside and I embarrass myself with my awful hover. Let's get started. So we're going to be doing a two-part series on this particular aircraft. Uh, the first one we're going to do, of course, is getting us in the air and kind of the basics. And then the second one, of course, we're going to be dealing with sort of how to get around and some like maneuvers and stuff like that. Really, it's an absolutely fantastic helicopter. So first things first, uh, what we want to do here is, well, we want to get this thing going. You know, one of the things they've done for us to really help out is they did provide us with this handy dandy little document right here. And uh, the reason this is so great is this is actually pretty accurate. Um, the reason it's not so great on the flip side is it's in my face. <laughs> now, if I were a normal view here, this is what you see. Uh, for those of you who are VR players, which is, this is so amazing in VR. I love this, like my new favorite VR thing to fly. Um, this one does a really, really, really nice job. And now, like I said, it's kind of cool. I like how they give you a lot of little details. Like you can open up the doors and stuff like that if you want to kind of climb out. If you wanted to run through all of this and you want to check the Jesus nut up at the top, which is this guy to make sure that basically the rotor blade does not fall off. Um, it's, it's good to check those things. It's good to check those things. Uh, believe it or not, this is a helicopter I actually have real world time in. And um, I think that's kind of cool. And so one of those opportunities, there's this little button right here to go ahead and do it. Uh, it's the middle of the summer for us, so I'm flying with the doors off. I don't know why. I think my favorite part of that entire sim lesson or flight lesson in the real world wasn't a sim lesson was when he handed me the door and he said, this thing's $6,000. Don't drop it. <laughs> So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing started, shall we? So first things first, let's grab a checklist here. Um, we're going to go run through a couple things. A rotor blades untied, doors is... <laughs> uh, Seatbelt's harness is set, fuel shutoff valve. This is how you know if somebody knows this helicopter. Where's the fuel shutoff valve? Where is this fuel shutoff valve? Where could it be? Is there a fuel shutoff? Oh, there it is. Oh, sneaky. It's behind the co-pilot seat. And you can see it's in the correct position. Just one of those great tests. All right, let's see. Cyclic and friction and all that stuff should be set on. Uh, the easiest way to check that is just this little guy right here. Um, basically, by playing with this, it increases the uh, friction of it. So you can turn friction up, friction down, kind of a thing like that. Um, I think it's fine where it is. So I don't I don't need to feel the need to fiddle with it, but you can fiddle with it if it is something that bothers you. Like I said, it doesn't really matter much to me. Uh, by the way, the yoke is invisible right now. I hit it. This is the stupidest yoke ever. Like, I mean, I'm an okay pilot, right? But this was terrible. Like, I cannot describe. This is the hardest part of flying this thing was dealing with this yoke in the real world. But yeah, we'll deal with it another time. That's all set. Uh, let's see here. So uh, throttle is going to be full free and full of travel. Uh, throttle is going to be this little thing here. We twist the throttle in this helicopter, uh, which is really handy for us. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to set the, uh, let's see here, map lights. Rotor blake is released. It's behind my head. Cyclic is neutral. Good, good. Map lights off. Circuit breakers in. Carburetor heat is off. Uh, mixture comes to full rich. So in the real world, what you do is you set the mixture in this is little cup right here and so i can tell somebody's doing it right click you want to put that around there so you don't grab it <laughs> it'd be very bad for us if something happened to it in flight all right let's see here pedals are all set check security i uh, just make sure they're not loose uh, like i said there's no brakes on this thing uh rotor brake is engaged map circuit breakers carburetor mixture mixture guard primer if installed down and locked so the primer is actually between our legs it's uh, right here um you could prime it it's like i said uh not required usually it doesn't start right away you can prime it but uh, for us, like I said, I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. We'll give it one twist if we get close. Landing lights off, avionics, if we have a switch for it. Uh, speaking of avionics, so one of the cool things they gave us is they gave us these two avionic switches. And uh, what you can do is you can actually hold your mouse through them and basically move your scroll wheel around to try different versions. Uh, the version of the helicopter I flew looked like this. Uh, but they do have this nice version, which is pretty cool because you get a GPS. And you also have this version, which has like the box with the GPS on it, which is... Not that you could fly this thing instruments. I mean, you could, but you can't because you need a co-pilot. But um, it's pretty cool. And of course, we can also change the GPS version. So if you do this and we fiddle with the, this option, we can put the GTN 750 on here, for example, which is really cool. It um, definitely is a handy device. Uh, for us, um, we're going to go old school here because um, this is what I think of. Again, even I'd even go more old school than this, to be honest. Click. Bop, bop. Ah, that's, that's as old school as I want it to be. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to take a look at here, let's see, a map light, that's good. Clutch is disengaged. Oh, we want to make sure this is engaged. It's just like I like starting with the clutch engaged. Altimeter is going to be set. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Good to go. Governor switch is set on. Now, this is one of those things you don't get wrong. So you'll notice here the on and off switch is, uh, the governor switch is this guy right here. Now, if I click it to the on position, one of the things you'll observe is if I rotate the throttle, the governor switch isn't obvious which way is on. So uh, what they've done is with the throttle at zero, they tell us that on is to the right. Uh, that's very helpful. We're also going to get an angry warning light right here to let us know that the gov is off the gov is off so what we're going to do is clear our rotor blades we did that uh, throttle twist for priming as required um you saw me twist it a couple times it's primed 
Throttle is closed, so we pull the throttle all the way to zero, which we have done here. Battery master switches are on. Uh, strobe and beacon switches are going to come on. The weird part is going to be in a moment. So let's go ahead and fit the battery switches. I think it's looking pretty good there. Uh, we have the master switch. Uh, we're going to pop that one for the alternator. Alternator. <laughs> we're going to make sure our bacon lights are on. And we're going to save our bacon here. Click. Uh, we're going to pop that on and let everybody around us know that we are a helicopter. We're dangerous. Watch out for us. Uh, fuel quantity check, very important. You will blast through fuel. You can see how little fuel we actually carry on board here. Um, let's see here. Da -da -da. Ignition starter on switch. Okay, so this is how it goes. You start, get the left side to 50%, and then when that happens, you've got to engage the clutch switch, and it should make some angry sounds. Oh, oh sorry, alternator should be off, my bad. I always get that one. I always get it backwards on the Robinson 22. I'm thinking the 66. So the avionics and headsets, we can put all that stuff on. Altimeter, clutch light on, and then you have to play with the warm up. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So let's do it. So we're already primed. I've twisted that thing a couple times. So this is where it gets interesting. So I'm going to come over here to the key, and uh, you're going to listen carefully for the engine to catch. Hear it. And now this is going to drop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my throttle. Again, that's the twisty one here. And I'm going to push this until we get uh, about 50 55%, right around there. And then we're going to engage the clutch, and we're going to smoothly increase power here. You don't have to go too hard on this step. you got to catch it. Ah! Now, I did that intentionally to show you what is going to happen here. Let's go ahead and disengage this here. I'm going to pop that off real fast, and you can see it automatically popped itself out. So what happened... So one of the interesting things of this helicopter, and like I said, I wanted to definitely show this to you, when it happens to you as well, is you'll observe that my engine stalled. Uh, we stalled the helicopter engine. Um, you can see that it didn't have enough time to really warm up and get going before we tried to engage the clutch. Now there's a couple ways to get around that. So what I'll do here is I'll quickly go ahead and I'll give it a fast prime here, twist, twist, give it a little bit of a crack. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to crank it again. Again, our engine's still good here. Engine comes back up. I'm going to go stabilize this. And the trick here is to not use such a low R or such a low RPM. If you go a little higher on the RPM, you can see about 55 here. Let's go ahead and engage the clutch. It's going to get grumpy. It's going to get grumpy. Let it go. Let Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You have the urge to touch this so hard. Don't touch it. Wait for the grinding noises to go away. And we got it. I just had to give it a little bit of push of the throttle. You'll see these two uh, gauges are now touching each other. That is good. So we're going to get to about 60%, and I'm just going to bring back the throttle a little bit. The governor is not going to catch it right away. There it is. My clutch light is also out, and uh, that's exactly good news for us. All right, now we can go ahead and warm the sucker up. Awesome. So I need a little bit of push of the throttle. And again, depending on the real model, it, it can get a little fun kind of fiddling with that. All right, that's all set. I like that. Let's see. Starter on light is off. Air is clear. Ignition's clear. Clutch is good. Oil pressure. We check that as we guard. Alternator switch. Click. And we should get a bunch of uh, no, warning lights should go out. There should be no warning lights right now. So our helicopter right now is generating its onboard power. The rotor is engaged, as you can hear very clearly behind me. Oh, that's a pretty pleasant as fact. It's kind of nice when you fly with the windows open. And now it's just a matter of kind of getting the last couple sets is all set. Altimeter is good. Clutch light out. About, like I said, about 70 to 75 percent. You can see I'm about 73. That's plenty. Uh, systems check engine gauges. We're just going to confirm they're in the green. There's a hidden engine gauge, though, and that's this one. It doesn't have a green, but it does have a no zone. You're going to want a carburetor temperature knob on this one, or carburetor heat. It becomes very problematic. So one of the things we like to check is we like to do a magneto drop. Uh, we got to be at 75% power to go double check to make sure that these things work. And it's really important that we go through it because like I said, this one's a little funky. And if you get something wrong on a helicopter, you ain't coming back from it. You're definitely, definitely not coming back. So let's go ahead and walk through the magneto check. We should get a slight RPM drop and you can see it came down nice and easy. Bring the power back on. It's going to take a second. We've got a lot of inertia with that huge blade above our heads. Go ahead and pop that down. And We've got a pretty even check there. It looks good to me. Our carburetor knob over here. You see how why they put this little mixture garb on it? Uh, the reason they want you to do that is so you don't accidentally grab this one. So I'm going to give that a little tug right there. Uh, we should see our carburetor heat temperature spike. We should also see the RPM come down, which is exactly what it did. I'll go ahead and slam that close there. And this engine looks pretty good. RPM should come back up. Which it did. Everything looks pretty darn groovy in that regard. Uh, we also have green gauges. Uh, looks good, looks good, looks good. Doors, uh, we've already taken care of the doors here. Collective frictions, a lot of people shut these off. And again, we can shut it off by going like this. And that's going to reduce it. Uh, move the seat for better view of the controls. Isn't that awesome? I love that.
Uh, we have warning lights are out, a low RPM check. Uh, this is pretty good. So we're, gonna, we're just going to go give it a little bit of a pump power here. We're just going to let it boost up. And all we're trying to do is uh, race this up to our standard RPM. And again, I'm smoothly feeding in RPM here. Now, I'm not touching my throttle because the governor is going to kick in any second now. And it's going to get real grumpy at us. It's going to pop us up into the green. Wait for it. And you can see the governor is now in control. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one of these with my own throttle here. And the governor will catch it automatically. And you can see the governor did a really, really nice job there. Uh, one of the things we could do, of course, if we wanted to do a quick little test to make sure everything is working, is we can actually pop the governor off real fast, uh, give our throttle a wiggle. And what that will do is that will cause, uh, it's going to warn us that the governor's off and we're going to lose our, our power just like that. So come over here, pop the governor back on. I'm going to go ahead and get, get it going again. Again, you have to use manual throttle to get it into the range. And then I recommend taking whatever throttle control you're using is to basically pull it back to zero. So you're basically not overriding the governor. There we go. I'll get us back into the correct spot just like that. I'm going to go ahead and pull my personal throttle all the way back to zero. That's not the collective. That's a little different on this helicopter. So this is all set. Uh, engine shut down. This is good to go. I can go ahead and put this down. All right, let's talk about this helicopter itself. Uh, this is going to be interesting. This helicopter was designed basically from the ground up as a training helicopter. It's a, not very powerful, it's a, not very fast, but it is stupid maneuverable. You have to be on your A-game with this thing in order to be able to safely operate it. It's uh, just one of those things. And they did a really, really nice job with this helicopter and flight sim in order to recreate some of the pain that is operating of this helicopter, which I really appreciate. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a hover check, and then in our next video, we'll do some actual maneuvers with the helicopter itself. So let's go ahead and do our hover check. Uh, it's a relatively simple process. So uh, make sure everything's good. Like I said, this is your last chance to make sure you did everything right. Of the fact this little switch right here. I love that the landing light switch is on the yoke, even though it's a cyclic here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoothly apply collective. And what's going to happen is the helicopter is going to make all sorts of noise. And you can watch as my governor basically is racing to deal with the new load of the helicopter. Now, fortunately, we have a pretty good amount of friction on the ground here. If we were on grass, we'd actually start rotating very, very slowly. Uh, we're not going to have that problem here, uh, which is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that just a bit. Now, in the real world, uh, you can see just like that, we started to get light on the skids, and you can see that the helicopter wanted to come forward. So you'll notice that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my controls, and I'm going to do what they call the J. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to make a J. Now, if you notice, because we're so light on the skids, when I pull the J, the whole helicopter lifts off the ground. So when you do your J, all you really need to do is move your controls back just a tiny bit here. There we go. It's the J. So what we're going to do is we're going to smoothly go ahead and hold your control slightly to the left at the same time as you're going to gently press left collective. Now, if you do this correctly, we'll come just a few inches off the ground. And just like they always say with helicopter training, uh, whenever you're learning to hover, you cover a lot of ground. And we've got a pretty nice little wind today, so it makes it kind of interesting as we uh, try to stabilize here. And uh, if you are one of those lucky people out there that does have a collective control at your desk, you are very fortunate because it makes this so much simpler. But one of the things you'll probably notice is this helicopter is all over the place. So one of the things you want to do is if you feel yourself really struggling to get that hover in smoothly, is try letting go of your controller a little bit. Don't put such a death grip on it intentionally relax whatever hand you have on your controls and you'll find the helicopter suddenly wants to kind of balance itself out the other thing i always warn everybody when you're first doing these initial little steps with this helicopter is it's going to do silly stuff like this if you have a noisy throttle for example well, it's going to cause you to basically bounce up and down and one of the other things you'll probably notice is uh, the way that once it gets stable it sort of just chills and it sort of wants to fall out of the sky uh, welcome to uh, microsoft's version of ground effect here and it's got its rotor and ground effect is a very real thing and i have a fun video on that if you want to see me kind of experiment it. One of the things you want to try to avoid doing whenever you're playing with this thing, when you're first getting the hang of it, is try not to do five or six different control motions at once. Uh, try to keep it simple. If you notice that you're drifting downwards, for example, remember that when you apply collective, you're also going to have to apply left foot and you're going to have to compensate with right cyclic. So that's why I usually tell people kind of let it just sort of settle and then sort of see what it wants to do and then kind of feel at each motion naturally. So your first experience with this helicopter really should be doing basically what I'm doing here, which is trying to find that sweet spot. Now, when you're working in your sweet spot, uh, one thing that you can do to make your life a little bit simpler is you can actually get a little bit outside of ground effect. 
perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this around a little bit here, bring that nose out just a little bit. I'm going to bring us into the wind here to make this a little bit easier. When you're out of ground effect, you've essentially eliminated one of the variables of your actual hovering experience. So that way you can concentrate just on your cyclic inputs as well as your anti-torque inputs, which are going to be the ones by your feet. Now, one of the things you'll notice is this helicopter is much easier to fly when you're not in ground effect. You just give it a nice gentle tug in the direction you want it to go. And all you have to do is sort of ride out whatever fun little wind that you're experiencing that day like we are. And you can see it naturally has that gyroscopic procession. Again, they did every little detail with this helicopter, almost perfect in that regard. And that's one of the reasons why I respect the developers so much. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and come back down to Earth. Now I'm just kind of gently, again, we can reduce the collective just a little bit. It really takes very, 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 very little with this helicopter to kind of get us going. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come on down and settle, and then we're going to leave the video at that. And then, of course, we'll pick up next time with a little bit of flying around with this, just to give you an idea of what else you can do with it. Remember, the ground effect effect is very, very, very strong ATM machine. So we're just going to settle in nice and gently, just like that. Give it a nice little touch. And again, things that are easy in VR, because you can kind of look down at your skids. But other than that, we'll see you next time. Enjoy.